So in the last video, um, I shared with you my sketch. Now we're going to start the digital inking process, which is taking the sketch, whether it's really loose or really refined, and trying to find those outlines that give our illustration character, our original illustration character. So I'm going to open up my sketch in Photo P. And to do that, I'm simply going to open from my computer my most refined sketch. This is for assignment seven. And I played with some different placements. I wanted to add um, a little vaccine image into it. I'm not sure I'm sold on that yet. But I might ink that separately uh, just to kind of show you how that works. So to digitally ink, first, I want to make sure if I'm using a raster program instead of a vector program to trace everything. And some people like to, to ink with vectors. Like you can see here, this is all done in Illustrator. Uh, some people like to ink digitally in a raster program, but then bring it into a vector program like Illustrator and, and do what's called live tracing it into vectors. That's generally what I like to do for things like t-shirts. But if you don't have Adobe Illustrator, we're just going to make sure that our raster line work is sufficient, that it has a high enough a quality resolution. So the first thing we need to do, because we're doing it as a raster, is to go to our image size. And I scanned my sketch in. You might have just taken a photo of your sketch with your camera, so it's really important to look at your image size. And what I want to change it to, because this is going to be used on a poster, is I actually want to change it to around 9 by 12 inches. So I'm going to make the proportions the same. So it's close to 9 by 12. It's 9 by 11.88. And then it's dots per inch. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to make it 300, you know, professional printing standard. Now because I scanned my pencils at 600 pixels per inch, even though it wasn't 9 by 11 inches, it was just a smaller sketch. That means that I'm pretty close to my original resolution already. Now, when I digitally ink, I'm going to be using the brush tool. And I have options for the brush up here. And I'm just using a laptop with a trackpad. But I also have my tablet, my uh, Wacom tablet here. I just accidentally clicked a button on it. And this is just a small Intuos $60 tablet. And I'm going to show you the difference between using it, which allows me to go thin to thick with one stroke, that's with a with a tablet and stylus, versus using that same brush with just my trackpad, which doesn't allow me to go thick to thin. Right. So I know it's come up in, in the class a few times. Do you need a, a stylus and a tablet to do this part of digital artwork? And for digital inking, it definitely has its advantages. You know, I would prefer everyone had a tablet to do this with. If you have a stylus and a tablet and software to use it with, even if it's online, like Photopea, I definitely recommend you do it. But I'm going to be demonstrating with just the most basic technology. So I'm going to be using just the trackpad, which keeps me at one consistent <laughs> um, size the whole time, so I just need to pick the size very carefully. I'm going to recommend that you just use a basic brush. So just a hard mechanical brush with 100% hardness. And then the only thing you have to worry about is the size. So it's just a circle. And that doesn't mean that that's going to be the best for all of your digital inking throughout your digital artwork. But for introduction to it, and especially to help with digital coloring that comes next, I want us to keep it pretty simple. So your options are to do it with a mouse or a trackpad, just like that, or to use a stylus. The same brush will give you these different options. Right? But either way, we're going to be using the brush tool. It's also a little limit. It can be especially limiting 
using browser-based software when doing digital inking because of the lag. So you want to turn off any other programs that are on that you don't need. I don't need preview open, so let me quit that. Unfortunately, I have to have Zoom open, and I have to have the screen recorder open, So, and my computer's kind of old. So sometimes my digital inking will lag a little bit. It's probably going to be pretty true to some of your experiences with whatever technology you're using. So you just be patient. We're getting introduced to, to basic principles here. So. We're going to use the brush pen. We're going to use a basic brush size, but we don't want to actually ink on our sketch. We want to ink on a new layer on top of our sketch. And just like when we were inking over the top or, or finding vectors on top of our logos, it's really helpful to do something called onion skinning. So this is how you can do that in a raster program. You're going to make a new blank layer on top of your sketch. Remember, our sketch is image size to be around 9 by 12 inches at 300 pixels per inch. And then I'm going to fill that blank layer with white. And I could say at 50%, but I just say 100% here. And then I take the opacity down in the layers to 50%. So it's like having tracing paper over the top. And then I'm going to make I'm going to lock it using the padlock, and I'm going to lock my sketch so I don't accidentally paint on my sketch layer anymore or paint on my onion skin layer. Instead, I want a brand new layer, and this is going to be my ink line. So this I will call line art. Now I'm using the freeware browser-based version of Photoshop called PhotoP. But PhotoP, which matches Photoshop in almost every way, uh, has a tool that Photoshop does not have with its brush, which is actually a wonderful tool. And you'll see it, it's an option for the tool up at the top. And I want everyone not to click on this because that, if you use your stylus, that is making it based on opacity so that the softer you push, the less opaque it is, which is wonderful for painting, but not so great for inking. So instead, you want this one turned on, which keeps it at 100% opacity no matter how hard you press or how lightly you press. And then with the stylus, the only thing that's different is the harder you press, the thinner, the thicker the line is. With the trackpad, it's always going to be the same thickness. Okay, so I just made lots of lines. I want to delete all of those. Excuse me, Professor. Yes. If uh, I, I had issues using, um, say you have an iPad, yeah, uh, an iPad Pro, um, I could not get PhotoP to properly display on on the image, okay, or, you know, on the tablet. Um, could, is there an app-based program like Procreate that would be better for this? Sort of yeah, thing? Procreate's perfect for this. Um, okay. Yeah, definitely. Procreate has lots of good tools. And what I'm basically teaching you is not how to do this in PhotoP or how to do this in Photoshop or how to do this in, in um, Paint Tool Sci or how to do this with GIMP. GIMP is a, a freeware you can download on a computer, you know, and actually download it to your computer instead of have to use it through a browser. What I'm trying to teach you with this is what the basics are of all digital inking and, and all digital coloring, which requires you to be able to ink on one layer and then layer color underneath it on separate layers. So yeah, any way you can approach that. But I want us all to start with just black ink lines, even though those lines might change in our finished coloring. Okay, so I'm on the line art layer. I've zoomed in on my image a little bit. I'm going to take my brush down to about 15 pixels. And I'm going to keep the hardness at 100%. So here is the feature that's new that you won't find in Photoshop. And it's smoothness. Smoothness is to help you smooth out your lines. 
The problem is it can cause additional lag <laughs> in your work. So if I do zero smoothness, the computer will pick up everything I draw really exactly. But sometimes I get a little wobbly, right? Especially using a trackpad in my finger. This would be the same if you're on on like an iPad. And especially if you don't have like the Apple Pencil and stuff, that makes it a little bit easier. So you see all that bumpiness? If I turn smoothness on, and I'll, I'm going to go ahead and make my brush a little bit smaller just for this syringe. So let's try uh, 10 pixels. 9 pixels. So if I have smoothness on just at 39%, if I draw that same thing, the computer kind of intervenes and doesn't let me shake quite so much. And I can start and stop whenever I want to. But it will also kind of lag a little bit. Now you see that this isn't as perfect as a vector is. And you sometimes do have to go in. And I usually set my eraser up to be 100% hardness and a similar size to my brush. So if I need to trim it a little bit, I can, right? But this is a good level of finished inking because it's at high enough resolution. I don't need this all to be perfect vector shapes. This is an illustration, not a logo. I know perfectionism is something we all kind of struggle with. And so I'm trying to, to let you know the tools are helpful for you. Let me turn for my eraser. I can turn the smoothness on just a little bit. So I have basically two tools. I have my inking brush. I 100% opacity, 100% flow, a smoothness of around 40%. And I'm just using a trackpad. And yes, I will not be perfectly straight and smooth all the time, but that's going to be OK for this project. It's going to look kind of better that way. And I can always kind of tighten it up by using the eraser. What I like about this when I'm using a trackpad is that then does vary my line width a little bit just by kind of erasing it. And when you go over it, like at the corners, when you paint over twice, just like with an inking pen, it's going to be a little bit thicker at the, at the edges. This is very different than using the vector shape tools, for instance, and giving it a black stroke of an exact width. And some people like to digitally ink with vectors, but it's going to give you a very cold look. And then rotating it and sizing it. And if you're a digital artist, you should be comfortable doing both. But I don't want my syringe to look really blocky and bizarre, you know. I want it to look like an inked drawing. Just like it's done professionally. Where you might sketch in the computer, and then when you ink in the computer, you're trying to capture the energy of that sketch. All right. Where am I? There we go. So I like those slightly thicker corners. So instead of trying to turn on a dime, I will just lift up my brush by unclicking and then set it down. And I kind of paint my corners twice. And if a line goes a little too crazy, I can always do Command Z. I can try upping my smoothness a little bit because some angles are harder than others. 